Hello and welcome to another okay. Chrome <laughs> Mobile Thursday. Yes. Yes, I got that wrong in an earlier take. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this episode is about media. I'm Paul Kinlan. Uh, I'm with Sam Dutton, a developer advocate hey. on Google Chrome. Um, yeah, and today's about media, mobile media. It's an area. Yeah, absolutely. It's an area that you specialize in. Yeah. Um, in particular, it's about media on mobile as well. So. Um, a lot of people kind of think of like videos and everything, and everything to do with video. Like everything to do with video um, is mainly desktop based. Right? People think that you can only play videos on uh, obviously desktops. Obviously, that's not true. We can do it on mobiles. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got a nice whole load of new things coming inside Chrome for cra uh, Chrome, for Chrome for Android, Chrome for Android at least. For Android. Um, sure. Get user media is a big one. So yeah. being able to actually get access to the webcam. Um, there's a thing called Get User Media with Constraints, which yeah. I know you're going to talk yeah, about yeah, as well. Little, little demo uh, track element, WebRTC. Yeah. Have you got WebRTC today? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we've got a little bit of WebRTC. Hopefully, we'll show you, you something know, really cool. The connectivity gods. Yeah, of this. I've seen a really good demo of that today, actually. So, if that all works, we're going to have something really cool to yeah. show. Um, but yeah, w without much further ado, I'll pass you across to Sam, and Sam will uh, tell you all the awesome things about media and mobile. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to uh, show some stuff. Uh, we've got a stack of new APIs being implemented uh, for mobile, which is really great to see because it's kind of natural home for video, I think. You know, people using devices when they're out and about and um, being able to uh, kind of enjoy video uh, from uh, their phones and their tablets and so on. So, uh, straight up, I just wanted to go into uh, a little demonstration of something that's new for Chrome for Android and, uh, and I think actually for Firefox uh, for mobile as well, which yep. is great. Uh, which is get user media. We've got uh, the WebRTC APIs coming into mobile uh, for Firefox and for uh, Android Chrome. And uh, that means get user media, RTC peer connection, that's the thing for communicating audio and video. And the other one, which is RTC data channel, which is uh, like uh, kind of like WebSockets, but uh, you know, peer to peer between, uh, between browsers, really fast uh, arbitrary data communication. Um, anyway, so just diving in, I wanted to show you um, the state of get user media on mobile. So um, if we have a look at the, uh, the Nexus we've got here, um, you can see we've got uh, that running this really simple uh, get user media uh, demo, which is at simple.info slash gum. Um, and then if we look at the code for that uh, on the desktop machine, um, I just wanted to show you, you know, how damn simple it is now. Uh, we've got a bit of faff at the top there with uh, kind of getting navigator, get oh, user that media. Camera? That's the actual camera pointing up at the... Yeah, that's oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. Cool. If I put my hand over it, you can kind of uh, see cool. what's going on. Uh, so we've got, yeah, navigator, get user media. We've got some stuff in there to cope with the different implementations. and. Uh, then you'll see below that we've got uh, a constraints uh, object. I'll talk a bit more about that yeah. later. Um, and then when, if we go down the code here, you'll see when the get user media call is made, we pass it the constraints, a success callback, and an error callback. And the success callback is right there. Uh, and I've actually put this example, uh, the stream object, so you can access it from the console. That's why yeah. that line's in there. But really. Everything is done here in that line, video.source, window.url, create object URL, local media stream. That's it. And Sweet. that's setting the source of the video. It works on mobile devices, and it works on the Firefox so Opera. Which version of Chrome is that at the moment? Is that the beta channel? Or? Um, yeah, no, this is working in stable. And, oh, get uh, using it. And wow. sorry, on mobile, it's in beta. OK, but, I agree. Um, yeah, on uh, desktop, it's in, uh, it's in stable, and uh, likewise. Yeah, we're seeing that in Firefox. And yeah. You know, I've got a little question. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, okay. I don't know whether this is a... a Try rant. me. Uh, <laughs> so I was, I've, I've always wondered about Get User Media. It seems to start the actual session off to actually get the video yeah. like the video camera and everything. How do you end it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can stop the stream um, if oh, you so want. Oh, so this local stream. Yeah, local, that's local right. Local media stream you've got there. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see if it works. Uh, it might work. So I've got stream. If we have a look, actually, I don't know if we can see that. but. Um, You've, I've put the, like I say, the uh, the stream uh, variable in global scope, yeah. and um, yeah, we should, I think, be able to stop that. Let's try that. Let's see if that worked. Yes, it did. Oh wow! See, awesome. I'm moving my hand over the camera, and nothing's happening because I've stopped it. And yeah, that's it. Sweet. 
So that's yeah, that's how you can stop the uh, camera nice. from recording. <laughs> yeah, I've got kind of a simple way of doing it. Yeah, I've always wondered about that one because I was like, oh my god, it's it, it's got access to the camera all the time and. No, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I'll just demonstrate actually just to show what it looks like on the device in terms of the uh, permissions because this is really important. You know, we need to make yep. absolutely sure that people uh, know when they're uh, recording stuff. Yep. So we've got the uh, the bar at the top there with allow deny, and um, you know. There is, I'd say, no way you can do that without yeah. having I think explicitly. One, one of the given questions permission. that Remy Sharp had uh, the other day was, yeah. uh, "Can you select the camera?" I know it doesn't make much difference on the Nexus Seven because yeah. it's a front-facing camera. Now that's interesting. Um, so that brings me to my next topic, which is uh, constraints. Nice yeah, I like it's it. Because if I we like planned it, it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in fact, if we go to this very similar-looking demo on the device, um, this uh, is. Exactly like the uh, the previous demo, but if we go to um, the code for this in the Dev so, Tools, so just so everyone knows at the moment, you have actually connected Dev Tools up to the mobile device. Yeah, yeah. So I'm talking um, that through actually. No, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's like it's one of those things that we're trying to push uh, quite a lot at the moment. Uh, there's a command called ADB, and you can basically forward all the requests uh, yeah. from the Android Developer Toolkit at the moment uh, to the mobile device, and that's how you've got this uh, that's Dev right. Tools yeah. set up. It's yeah. not any special kit or rig. Um, it's literally just a USB cable straight to the device. Yep, yep. Got the USB plugged in there, and then just run the ADB command, and uh, yeah, it goes. And then you just on the uh, desktop machine, localhost nine triple two, and we get the full suite of DevTools. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, if we look through, you can see the elements we got here on the page. Uh, we've got uh, video there, and so on and so on. But um, if we go back to sources. Um, you can see this is really kind of the same as the uh, the previous one, but we have this constraints object which now has some mandatory rules. And what I've said here is that the uh, max width of the video that we're going to take for the stream is 360. That means 360 pixels. Mm -hmm. um, now, the thing is that um, if we look at the elements here, let's look at that video element. Look at the metrics for that. What you'll see is that. Um, We've actually got uh, the size there. At uh, let's, uh, it's giving actually the size of the the video itself. But um, what happens is that the sizes that videos can be in terms of their resolution are actually constrained to a fixed set. Okay. At the moment, we have no uh, scaling and uh, we have no cropping. So essentially, what's that mean? Is what that, that means is that if you set the uh, max width of uh, of the video that you get from the stream to be 360, that doesn't mean that it will take it to 360. It will drop it to a fixed set of uh, of um, of sizes. That, oh, so uh, if it can only do 240. Width. Okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, I'll, we'll give the links later, but there's essentially a fixed set of uh, constraints, uh, resolution sizes. Okay. So dimensions, x and y dimensions for the video. So what stream. other type of mandatory options are there? Are okay. There? So we can specify the width and height of the uh, of the stream, uh, which is which is implemented now in Chrome. And uh, also planned is the implementation for uh, the frame rate. So you could specify that you want a particular frame rate. So okay. Slower or whatever, um, and yeah. To get back to your question, uh, we're also going to be able to specify the front and back cameras there. So that's where that okay. will live. Um, that hasn't been implemented yet, um, and uh, the I mean, this is pretty new stuff. So the standards is you know still in flux. Okay, so it's actually going to be a programmatic thing rather than a user yeah. option. To yeah. So, so there's two things that go on. You can specify which uh, cameras you want to use, mm -hmm. and then the uh, the allow when you when you select the device from allow you can select which camera you want to use from there as well. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if you wanted to do like a flip of the camera, like between front base, front facing and back facing, uh, you would stop essentially stop the stream and then redo get user media, but with the front facing camera yeah, as well. The options. Yeah, that's a good question actually. Yeah, you would have to do that at this point. But, okay. Um, yeah, I can see that you might want to be able to do that without reinitiating the whole process. Yeah. It is tricky because, of course, there is this issue of uh, privacy that uh, you you don't want to be able to flip between cameras without the user giving permission I got for you. that. I got yeah, you. understood. Um, so, does this apply for audio as well? I know that, and we're not really touching on audio today, but uh, are there constraints for audio as well? Yes, there are. Um, yeah, I haven't seen those implemented yet, but uh, yeah, there should be some constraints about uh, the the kind of audio you can get in there, just as there is for video. Okay, well, cool. yeah. 
Because um, I, I remember when this was first done, yeah. this API, and the original constraints were a string of audio, yeah. comma. Yeah, video. yeah, that's right. And it's like audio yeah. true, audio false, yeah. video yeah. false, or whatever it so, is. So audio lives in here. Like you can, I've just got video here, but uh, yeah, if I put in audio there as well, it will, uh, it will. You know, we can get the audio from the microphone as well. Yeah. And Can you are there optional? I think optional constraints or yes, that's right. So um, yeah, there's 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 various degrees. I'm, I'm not even sure what they. I can't remember on the standard now what they are. But uh, yeah, there are optional constraints and mandatory. So depending on what's available on the device, uh, whether you would like certain uh, like to specify frame rate or whatever, or whether you're saying it won't. Don't let this work yeah. if it's uh, if it's not available. Yeah. Um, one thing, just while I remember uh, to. Think about with these constraints is that you get a rather unintuitive error message if you get them wrong. Okay. Uh, it's just kind of permission denied. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you're messing around with constraints, you get something like that. Just bear that in mind because that's um, yeah can be quite uh, perplexing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the oh, I forgot what the next question was now. Oh, I don't um, know. <laughs> I don't know. Should we just make up a question, Paul? Yeah, go on. Paul, our producer, do you have a question at all? No. Okay. Yeah, Actually, right. I know what it was. It wasn't was even it? a question. It was um, these demos that you have. We, yeah. we have a link to them, don't we? Yeah, uh, we do. We're going to pop that up on the screen yeah. in a couple of seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if anyone wants to try these out, you can definitely try them out with uh, Android, Chrome. That's right. Yeah. Uh, beta at yeah. the moment. Uh, you can try them out on probably Firefox and Android as well. Uh, yeah. I'm let's. Not, uh, let's I'm not sure about Opera just yet, um, but they'll also work on the desktop as well. So and we've got pretty good support for get user media now across uh, across a variety of the browsers. Yeah, actually, while we're there, I'll just uh, show you on the device. Um, the uh, the flag needs to be set for WebRTC, um, and if you go to Chrome slash flags, like about hyphen flags, yeah. uh, and you can do find on page is is really the easiest way to uh, to find the WebRTC. Yeah. But get use media is hidden behind that flag. It's That's not a right. separate flag. Yeah, okay. and then you enable. You can see it's enabled there. Um, yeah, so that's that needs to be done in order to use these demos. Um, by the way, while we're there, don't don't forget the really handy uh, Chrome URLs page. If you forget any of these, it's uh, okay. a really useful spot to. Uh, what so? What do the Chrome URLs do? So Chrome colon slash slash Chrome hyphen URLs gives you uh, a, list a full list of all the Chrome URLs, cool. like oh, uh, there's one you know, called Sys internals, yeah. and uh, actually I noticed the WebRTC one isn't there at the moment. But um, what does WebRTC internals do? Uh, that that show I'll, I'll show that later actually. That okay, uh, cool. that shows you what's going on with the current uh, the current WebRTC sessions. Cool. Yeah, which is really um, nice. So that's get user media. Uh, yeah. It's still pretty new, and we're gonna. We've got quite a lot to talk about today, so I think yeah. we should probably jump onto the next topic. Yeah, let's let's move um, on a bit. It's the track element, right? That's right. right. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to explain to everyone what the track element is? And yeah. Um, so, uh, if we look at the track, maybe if I just demo this, I think it might be the simplest way. So, the track element it was designed as a way of getting captions and subtitles and stuff like timed uh, metadata into uh, into video. So, oh, yeah, okay. if we play this video. The web is always changing. Um, you can see I'm getting, it's a little bit hard to see in the camera, but uh, you can see that I've actually used the Q change event to get um, the, uh, the value of each Q um, yeah. at the bottom there. Um, if we actually go to the, uh, the desktop device, hang on, I'll just show you what we're looking the at. The web here. is always changing. So, and the way um, we access it is changing. Yep. The source of that change that is you. Turn off the sound. I think that's all right, just about. Uh, I can take it up a little bit bigger, actually. So um, what you can see there is that uh, in the video element, I've got this uh, track element here. And that points to uh, what's called a VTT file, uh, which in this case is like a subtitles file. If we go to that, you can see it's a very straightforward format. Uh, we've got these things called queues. Each one of these is a queue. And it has timing and some stuff, uh, some kind of hints to how the thing may be displayed, and uh, and then in this case some text. Um, now the cool thing is that this has just been implemented on uh, Chrome for Android, so yep. um, this is you know really important. So it uh, it's a huge improvement for accessibility, and it's also great if you want to distribute content to people who are you know speaking different languages but want to watch your videos. Okay, 
So what? So at the moment, the way it works now is it overlays something on the video. Yeah, right? that's but right. But it doesn't actually work on Android properly. Yeah. Just... Now the other thing I was going to say yeah. is there's a bug. Um, if we, uh, in fact, let's let's. But you can get programmatic control, which you've done there. So. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, in fact, if we inspect the, this is kind of interesting because uh, if we if we look at the uh, page on the desktop machine in the dev tools, um, and uh, if we can see the, uh, let's see if I can. Uh, Look Are we looking at the, at the elements or the? Uh, I was going to try and look at the yeah the elements there. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping me, you know. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to show you something while we're there. So if we look at the uh, at the video here, I've I've turned on just to show you um, in uh, the Dev Tools. You can see down the bottom there. I've turned on Shadow DOM, uh, and what that means is that it's pretty cool. I can see. The uh, the stuff for the uh, for the actual tracks there, so that's pretty neat. Um, so if I look at the document fragment there, and I burrow down here, uh, oh okay, well, play so a bit. So what you're doing now is you're actually embed like that, like diving deep into the actual the video element, not the the HTML the representation access. of it. That's right. So if I look in there now, you can you can actually see the content of that uh, that uh, queue there. Oh so wow, that's pretty neat. And that's actually uh, pretty nice. And then you can fool around with that stuff. Yeah. So, is the track element supported across browsers yet, or is it just Chrome? Uh, it's in it's in just in Chrome, uh, but uh, we're you know we're hoping for better support across yeah. other browsers. Yeah. Um, are there any shims available for the developers? To yeah, there are. The um, Adios Money, I think, did one. Yeah, I'll I'll put some I'll put some documentation about that. Um, yeah, it's it's also possible to you know you can get the. Uh, the time of the video, and then okay. and then kind of fake it by putting a div across the uh, okay. across That's the cool. element. But it, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, by the way, you can also access the uh, the queue itself um, to style it. Um, if I go to the uh, CSS for this file, um, let's add a little. Oops, hang on. Let's add a little. Uh, Style. Hang on, if I can type. What's a Kyoka? <laughs> yeah, that's a color red. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, you should be able to. Hang on, if we, uh, it's not going to show it on the because the uh, if we do it on this. Can one, you bump? I'm going to say, can you bump the font size up on it? To see yeah. It's anyway, it won't show it on the device because right, it's okay. not there. But um, the uh, yeah, that's the uh, pseudo selector. The is uh, colon colon Q for cues, and there will be some. Uh, some other pseudo selectors coming as well, so you can style cues uh, nice. just as any other piece of uh, piece of text, which is really nice. Cool. Yeah. So um, I know that you did another demo. Have you got that available to yeah, share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to while we're talking about is this uh, one. I track. like this demo. It's a good yeah, one. yeah. So there's a couple of things I've done here. Um, this was one I really liked. Um, a guy just going onto the desktop machine. Um, this does work on the on the mobile device. I, yeah. I have to say, but. Uh, it's not the video is like yeah. 350 gigs, whatever. Anyway, it's huge. Anyway, um, it's not that big. Um, and uh, it's um, if we if we just bump this up, what this guy did was he took video uh, cycling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this guy took some video cycling around the Google campus in Mountain View, California, and uh, he got GPS data to run around. And uh, what we're seeing is that. Uh, as he goes around, the little man moves around the map, and we're seeing street view synchronized. Now, this is all done via the queues. Uh, so, what we you can see uh, if we look down here, look, I'll bump it up a bit so I can see. Yeah. I think we're getting some more. Okay, so people will be able to do it. Okay. Let's turn it off. That could be better. Yes, that's working. Sorry about the Our extraneous sort of uh, groaning. Very pleased. <laughs> okay, so this is really cool. We had like a you know this uh, track of of uh, XML uh, data turn that into uh, into uh, track cues, and then uh, we can synchronize the playback of the video with the the man moving around the back. So if we move the man, uh, you can see the video nice. moves, and as the video moves, the man moves. I really like this because it was, you know, the track element wasn't designed for this stuff. Um, I did a similar thing here. If we just go back to normal, um, I did a little uh, video search for all the Google Chrome videos from developer stuff. So, 
again, this what I've done is I've got all the uh, Google Chrome transcripts from uh, GDLs and all these Google Chrome events, and like there's dozens of them, 180 mm -hmm. or something, um, and it's it's searching through all those and uh, returning these results for a query, and then if I click on one of them, you can see that. It goes directly well, to that queue. Look at connectivity nice. everywhere. Um, why, why do so we need you know, a really great uh, tool for getting into uh, like deep navigation and search in media. And like I say, this is now available on uh, on Chrome for Android. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's really powerful stuff. I think. Cool. Yeah, that's a really nice demo. Um, I'm trying to work out how much time we got left. We haven't probably got a huge amount of time. Yeah. Um, so we did have a section about video and best practices with yeah. video. Shall we skip over that and then save that for another episode? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can do we, that. Because we want to do a weekly series uh, for like performance, mobile media, and a whole lot of other things. Uh, and there's a lot to talk around about around how to actually uh, best practices for the video element and actually how to deliver video. Yeah. Um, I think we can save that for another episode. Yeah, um, sure. And we'll get on to the really, really, really sexy stuff if yes. it all works. Yes. Yes. Shall we do that? Yeah. Um, so, without further ado, yes, <laughs> I'll tell you it's a web a, a better WebRTC demo. Yeah, um, yeah. So the the actual links to all the demos that we've got are going to be uh, on that documentation link that we've got. Um, so you can actually go and try these out. They do work only on Chrome if you've enabled the flag. That's at the right. Moment. Yeah. Um, so I encourage everyone to go out and test it. It's not a production ready feature just yet for mobile phones. Hopefully soon. Um, don't know when though. I think it's the easiest thing to say. Yeah. So yeah, just demoing on the device now. Um, we've got uh, a data channel running on uh, just on one page there, which is a nice little demo showing yeah data channels working. So what would you use data channel for? Uh, so data channel is great for really really low latency transfer of data between okay. peers. Okay. Uh, the point is you need the messaging and all that stuff you, as per any uh, connectivity. You know you need to be able to connect between the two devices. Once that's set up, you're going as directly as possible between them, okay. which is neat. Uh, so faster than WebSockets is. The okay. Point. So that's actually really interesting because the two of the projects I've worked on, the SuperSync Chrome, yep. SuperSync Sports, yep. and Jamwood Chrome, uh, they've all had this like user interaction piece where basically uh, the user will find another user in a different country yeah. and. Like have a race, or they'll make a band and join it together, and you have to have low latency um, messaging between the, the peers, and there can be up to like five peers in each game, I think, at the time. Yeah, that's great. Now that's great. they actually use uh, they could th they couldn't use WebRTC because it wasn't available at the yeah. time, so they use WebSockets, where they basically have a central server which the one client pings the server and bounces it off to the other mm -hmm. participants. Um, obviously, it's an extra hop of latency, and yeah. you don't know where the main servers are and all this other stuff as well. So I'm presuming the data channel itself is an API will be something that's really quite powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, we uh, we haven't got it here today, but uh, there's been uh, interoperability demonstrated with uh, Firefox, which is fantastic. Oh, for data so, channel. So in other words, we're talking about uh, full WebRTC interop between Firefox mobile desktop and Chrome mobile desktop. It's pretty powerful. Really exciting. Um, you know, there's a bunch of uh, these new libraries and apps coming through, which is just just what we hoped for. Yeah. Uh, we got stuff like PeerJS, EasyRTC, uh, and so on. And yeah, the EasyRTC uh, estimate is something like three billion WebRTC devices in like the next, you know, by 2016. So huge, huge potential yeah. there. That's going to be cool. I think yeah. I think it's one of those. It's one of those fundament, like fundamental pieces of tech that's available yeah. to the web that literally changes the way that we communicate with people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like the way uh, you know one of the web RTC engineers described to me. He said, "With RTC data channel, like you're up against this speed of light problem now. You know, yeah. they're really hitting the wall." And uh, it's, it yeah. seems like a telecoms problem now. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah, um, exactly. I, I always find the API like a telecoms API, but. That's by the yeah. by. It's, it's yeah. like you're getting these APIs built on top of it now. Yeah, no, no, we've got, we got these great uh, libraries coming through. Um, I, if, uh, if people want to look, uh, yeah, check out the links, and uh, you'll see that we've got these libraries like EasyRTC, like full stack for the back end, the front end, messaging, everything nice. in there. So you don't have to, yeah, the API can be, you know, it's a lot of work to get your head around the, the whole deal with messaging, peer connections, uh, you know, turn service, stun service, and so yeah. on. Cool. So. Should we do the? Can we show the demo oh, that we were going to show? Go on then. Let's go. I know go. we haven't got an amazing amount of time. And okay. There's, there's probably not much point in showing a lot of code for this, but right. it's, 
Uh, it's a pretty good one, this one. Okay, so I wanted to use this uh, app. I don't even know the name of it. I think it's Conversatio or Conversat.io. Um, let's see if I can get it to work. So I'm going to this site, uh, Conversat.io um, slash OK. This is all you have to do to join this video chat client. I'm clicking Allow yep. to... Uh, I will just say, though, to everyone, we're not actually streaming live. Wow, it's done it. Oh, oh cool. I can see. What, that's great. This is really cool. Um, yeah, so I can see I can see your hand moving in front of the camera. I'll try and get in there. Hello, Paul. <laughs> I saw your glasses. How cool. Yeah, OK. Um, so yeah, that's So you function. can't join, actually, now, because we're actually cheating a little bit and not filming exactly live to this week. Um, but if we were live, you could get people joining in quite easily, right? Because you yeah. just go to the URL, use this extra service. Um, it's pretty nice. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's right. Me. Hello. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I might that's kill it off now. That was actually pretty quick. I know. It was pretty cool. Fantastic. Well, did did our producer want to join into this conversation? Slash we need to, we okay. need to give him some love at least. Is he coming oh, through? He's got a sad face. Sad face. Forward slash OK? No? Ah, he's motioning to us that he's got something. He's getting something. Just while, while that's happening, um, the other thing we're getting with uh, these uh, setups like EasyRTC is access to uh, SIP gateways. What that means is we can get from the WebRTC web world to the, you know, what's oh, called. Here he, here he is. Hello. Hello. You can say hello as well. Hello. <laughs> Tra tragically, I can't see him here. You can see him. I can see him on my desktop. Can um, we put that one under the camera? Yeah, we can put that under the camera, I think. Come on. Just to prove that it's actually yeah, there. Yeah, Paul, give him a couple of seconds of fame. <laughs> I know you can't see very well, but there we are. Yeah, the man behind the desk. Uh, and he's actually gone off from his Nexus, uh, Galaxy Nexus S, is it? Or Galaxy Nexus phone? Um, I can't remember which one it is, but. Yeah. Well, I can hear my voice about half it a It is a bit later. weird. OK. <laughs> I might have to kill this, I think. I'll kill off my own. Um, that's actually pretty impressive. And yeah, it's great. That's the type of things that can be enabled by this, right? Yeah. And once yeah. it's on phones and tablets and desktops, yeah. we've got a pretty ubiquitous kind of yeah. Uh, yeah, this communication. Is, this is exactly what we hope for. Like, you know, EasyRTC has the full stack. It's ready to go. Uh, it's easy to use in just to build that into your web apps. Also, PeerJS would recommend uh, for Data Channel. It, you'll, I won't show you the code now, but it's really we straightforward. Can, we can do another, if people are interested, we can, yeah. do, we can do another episode around PeerJS yeah. and yeah. Uh, building kind of mobile apps which are uh, collaborative, essentially. So, I mean, the nice thing about these places like PeerJS is that they're offering the full backend service too. So they're okay. offering turn service, stun service, and uh, the, uh, the messaging hosting. All you put in your code is uh, a couple of lines, yeah. give a token, and who you want to communicate with. And I really, I really like the stuff that's happening now because I remember a couple of years ago, we did this app where you could dial a screen. Like you'd yeah. ring up a phone number and then start talking to a screen, and it was a hack upon a hack. It was, <laughs> it was like XNPP in the back yeah. end talking to the screen, and then oh, yeah. we had this like hosted like voice XML solution which would fire off the requests when you said north and south. Um, that was it was pretty cool for the time, but it was such a pain. Yeah. It was quite slow, and if you can just dial straight into a web page oh, no, via a SIP gateway, it's good. Oh, I, I'm actually quite kind of excited by this. Yeah, like, yeah, that whole thing, uh, you know, the so-called what's called PSTN, which is like the normal telephone yeah. network, completely now uh, interoperable with uh, WebRTC apps running on computers. I mean, yeah, cool, fantastic. So yes. Thank you very much. I think that ends yeah. our time. I think we've run out yeah. of a lot of time. Uh, we've actually got a lot to talk about. We did this for Jake's show the other day yeah. where we ran quite a lot over. Um, we've got a lot of content to tell you guys. Um, and it's not all going to be Chrome-based. It's going to be best practices for building yeah. mo like mobile media-based applications. Yeah. Um, so I suppose without much further of ado, is that even <laughs> a phrase? Ado? Further of ado, without much further of, of something. Um, I think we'll end it there. Yeah. Uh, I'm Paul Kinlan. And yeah. I'm Sam Dutton. And yeah, we'll be bringing you lots more stuff about using the video element on mobile devices. Yeah. And, all and that thank you to Paul Lewis, our producer yes. today. Good man. So thank you very much. And we'll see you soon. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>